Finally, guys, it's time to get to our grand finale. And it is a deep honor for me to present this game. What you're about to see is a world premiere trailer that gives us a new look at an expansive world we can't wait to explore again. This game comes from a studio that surprised the world and redefined Hit us with the it. RPG genre. Let's go! With iconic characters and rich storytelling. And I want to thank them for this trailer for one of gaming's most anticipated upcoming releases. Check out this shit the right here! We're true. Yeah! Let's go! Oh, let's go! <laughs> Holy shit! Through sector zero, one, and two. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are all. What the fuck? What happened to him? Oh, mama, let's fucking go, baby. Wow. Just look at it all. Oh, my so God. Clean. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It may look that way, but in reality, I'm getting chills. Hanging on. Oh my god, it's gorgeous! I was wondering, what's Cloud been doing these past Oh my god, days? there's fucking deer running there's around! Holy me? fuck! Holy Anyone fuck! Asking me this? This is gonna sound crazy. The oh, there's the chocobo farm! As far as I know, Cloud was never oh in god. Nibelheim five years ago. Oh my god! The live stream. It is the there he is! Oh, fire! Welcome, he finally gets to see him. The blood coursing. Hippie Grandpa. Is he on his little ball? According to Hojo, they're connected to Sephiroth. Holy shit! Shadows of the Man, I believe he called them. Sephiroth was in Midgard. We fought him. Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? Oh my God. After five years, doing who knows what. Well, Reunion, yeah. I think we will get up. Angered it more like. All right. Going to the crater. Holy crap! Oh my god. Hey, there she is. Elena. She may be new, but she's still a turk. Oh, I love her. She's such a loud mouth. Oh, she's great. Holy. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, Junon. Oh, it looks so goddamn fucking good. We got Red 13 gameplay. Where's Vincent? Yuffie, let's go, baby. There she is. Fuck. Get away from me! <laughs> they say she's a monster. That she can peer inside you. In Genova, baby, alright? Yep, 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 on the boat. That she can become those you hate. Those you fear. Those you love. Oh, he's so sexy! Yeah. Yeah. You murdered my dad! You burned my village! <laughs> You. Cowboy Tifa coming in. Oh, here's the oh the flashback. Yep. So, who is she? Where's Vincent? Damn it! Where's... Yeah, it's so fucking cool and all. Where is he? God damn. Early. On two discs. Did you see that? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming early 2024 to PlayStation Five. What did I say? I said it. What did I say? And that's gonna do it for Summer Game God Fest. God damn it! Showcase, but that is not the end of Summer Game Fest. Stay tuned this weekend for updates on many two whole games. fucking discs. Play days, a hand. That's huge. Media here in Los Angeles. It's a huge game. They went full open world. Holy! Liberty. I think they went full open world. Or it's full open. I don't know, but it's huge. It looks right huge. Now, Square Enix. I just have a question. Where's my man? I know you have him on a computer somewhere. Please release him. We need the cultural reset. Give the people what they want. 
God damn it. He's in there too. How big is part three gonna be? I know, right? Wasn't the same case with Remake was that was like it had a data disc and then the playable disc? Considering the scale of the game too. So like, I guess, you know, that trailer obviously showed us a shit ton of stuff. I know we didn't get Sid either. We didn't get Sid or Vincent or, or Kate Sith. So it's like, Mm, they're gonna wait for those, absolutely. You know, obviously very open areas and stuff, but is it full open world or is it like chunks? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, big zones that connected by certain areas. I don't think it makes much of a difference either way. It seems like all the things that we were expecting to see were in there, like the big areas and stuff, but we know it's gonna be fucking massive. What the fuck was that in the beginning? Maybe we should go, should we go back and rewatch the trailer? Do you guys wanna go back and just like dissect it? I assumed, that Rebirth would either come out near the end of this year or the beginning of 2024, and it looks like that's the case. Um, Rebirth, beginning of 2024. That's what I thought was probably gonna happen. So probably either March or April of 2024, similar to um, Remake in 2020, because that's the time frame it came out with. Because it's coming out, you know, next year, uh, you can bet your sweet bippy they will be having sporadic trailers over the next, you know, till release. That's probably when we're going to see the new characters or, you know, Sid and Vincent. So we can expect uh, a steady stream of marketing from here on out. This is kind of what they did with Remake as well. Teaser, here's like a big elaborate gameplay, all that thing. And then they didn't show Tifa in Remake until like two or three trailers in. I think after 16 comes out, then you can expect Seven Rebirth marketing. God, I just wish Vincent was in that thing. I wish they would like dip to black and then come up and then like Vincent, oh, it would have been so goddamn cool. And I think it'll still happen. You know, they'll have like a, a, a trailer basically dedicated to introducing each new character joining the party. All right, let's, let's take a moment to dissect this really fast, all right? Gotta be Zack's timeline. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, this is probably Zack's timeline where everybody was in Midgar. Okay, if we're talking the original Seven timeline, everyone's already out of the city at this point. They're out about, you know, frolicking in the field. They've left Midgar, so whatever this is, is this the other timeline where the, the main cast was still in Midgar and, so, and they got blown up. Maybe, maybe they got caught in the plate. I don't know. So let's watch this. We're still here at the scene of this terrible disaster caused by a massive tornado which swept through sector zero. <gasps> the fire tornado. <gasps> One and two. Sorry, my brain's clicking things. If, it play, if you played Remake, you know what scene I'm thinking of. You know, you know that fucking sick ass shot with Sephiroth and Cloud standing back to back with that giant ass fire tornado? Remember that? I'm gonna do a big old spoiler alert here too for people who haven't played the original uh, remake. Let me hit my spoiler button really fast though. Warning, warning, spoilers for Final Fantasy VII Remake and just Final Fantasy VII in general. All right, put your hat on, fellas. This is the time to throw anything, anything goes. We have new content to work with. Parallel universes, yeah. So at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, some crazy banana shit happened where basically it alludes that there is a separate timeline where Zack Fair lives somehow. And I believe this scene is somehow showing us what would happen in a scenario where Zack lives, okay? And somehow the rest of the cast got fucking hit. We don't know how these things are colliding. We don't know Sephiroth's plan. All we know is both Aerith and Sephiroth in Remake seem to imply that they know what the fuck is going on. They know more than that they are leading on. Sephiroth definitely knows more than what he's leading on. Aerith also seems to be because she can communicate with the planet because she's an ancient. She's like, she, she's she been communicating what's going on with the planet and shit's getting fucked. We don't know how these things are gonna correlate. We don't know what the hell's going on, but this starting off with a hit is crazy because this is not possible with the original seven timeline. By this point in the game, they're out of Midgar. This shit right here never happens in the original seven. So let's go. We're still here at the scene of this terrible disaster caused by a massive tornado which swept through sectors zero, one, and two. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, Search and rescue operations are already in progress. The, and of course they keep banging us over the head with the unknown journey continues. Just look at it all. No it's Vincent so for today. Crazy. I know. After I know. We've done to it, I brought out all of my Vincents strong. and for what? For what? It may look that way, but in reality, it's barely hanging on. Are they dead? I don't fucking know, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. 
That shit never fucking happens in the original, so it's clearly the separate timeline. They get fucked up in the separate timeline. This is Zack is the second disc. Well, I think the two disc thing is referring to how Remake did it. So the original Remake had a data disc and a playable disc. That's pretty common with large games. So I don't think the two disc is like two playable campaigns or anything. I think it's just one's the data disc, one's the playable disc. That's just, I think that's the case. Because Remake had that too. It's just letting people know, hey, there's two discs in the case. As far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. And, and Tifa's like... Not to, like, punch holes in Cloud's amazing tale with Sephiroth, but that shit never fucking happened. <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. First of all, the deer, the foliage, wow. What happened to Cloud and Zack's timeline? I I don't know. We don't know. That's the thing. And, like, and we still don't even understand, like, how the second timeline is even playing into anything. You know, all we know is that Sephiroth and Aerith be knowing shit that they're not disclosing to everybody. In some way, somehow, Zack lived in another scenario. This is gonna sound crazy. Tifa calling Cloud the Lulu moments. Mm -hmm. I know. The, the Chocobo Fort, like the Chocobo Farm is so fucking cute. The, look at this, everyone's just like running along. I was wondering how they were gonna go about this. You know, it's like, would the entire party be able to like run with you in, in these segments? Um, or were they gonna revert back to like, kind of, you know, the uh, purport, like scaled down overworld where it's just like Cloud running around on the map? No, it looks like they're going full scale for the most part, which is excellent. Where's Kate Sith? Well, keep in mind, at least when it comes to like Sid, uh, Vincent and, and Kate Sith, I think they're gonna save those for future promotional trailers. They've definitely withheld them from this on purpose so that they can gradually ramp people up with reveals. I anticipate Vincent will get his own reveal trailer at some later date and time. Well, yeah, we know where we know where Kate Sith is technically. We saw him in remake. It's literally just like Reeve at a computer controlling a robot, so. The live stream. It is the very essence of our star. The blood coursing through its planetary veins. Yeah, hippie mumbo jumbo. Uh huh, uh huh. According to Hojo, they're connected to Sephiroth. Yeah, they have to be. He has to be referring to the the fucking. Um, I call them the trash bag clan because in the original seven, they just look like fucking trash bags. For those who aren't familiar with the original seven's plot or just for, for kind of like forget about this detail or whatever, it's like ex Sephiroth failures that have Genova cells in them, so he can technically like control this you know mindless cult. You know, remember the roommate in remake that you know had the number on him? Those are them. He can kind of like control them and um, almost like body jump through them and stuff. Uh, spoiler. Cloud's technically one of them, so he's, you know, he's technically mad. Sephiroth's little puppet without realizing it. After five years, doing who knows what. Also, the real Sephiroth at this point, assuming we're going by original timeline logic, the original Sephiroth, like his his actual body, is hooked up right now inside the you know bottom of the crater near the core of the planet. He's like basically in a big old crystal jar, chilling down near the core of the planet. Um, and he uses the trash bag clan Sephiroth cult as a way to kind of manifest himself in different places. He's a little OP, so here they are. I think we will get up. Angered. Yeah, he's in the freezer. He's you know he still has power, but his actual body is uh is busy. He's getting that juice. Yeah, this looks fucking sick. Feast your eyes on the Turks' latest and greatest, Elena. Elena, I absolutely love her as a Turk. She's like the new Hyrie. In the original seven, she's a fucking loudmouth and she'll just like blab like all the, you know, confidential top secret information of like, oh, we're supposed to be going here in X, Y, and Z. So happy to see the Turks are back. She may be new, but she's still all right, we got rude. This shit's gonna be great. This is definitely inside of the, um, this is like right before you like, you know, figure out that everyone's going to June on. This is like talking to them in, uh, I can't remember the location's name, but you come across them pretty early after the Chocobo farm. So the thing that they have mentioned about rebirth and just the future of this, you know, projects or whatever, is that the scenes that you want to see remade and recreated are going to be in the game. Obviously, maybe with some different context, obviously with this extra layer of mystery and separate timeline stuff and all that. All of those scenes and beats you want to see recreated will be in the game, okay? Now, they have also stated that the series of events are the same, but not the order. So, you know, we may be going to certain locations first over others. So just keep that in mind is that, you know, maybe... 
like um, like discovering Vincent or something maybe later in the game. I don't know. Um, but uh, they have moved around the order of where you go about things, which for the sake of like having a more uh, linear storytelling and all that is perfectly fine in my case, as long as, you know, the beats are there. Is there a thing with the 100 biddies earlier saying, uh, the new set expressway, I wonder if is what happens if you didn't escape the machine on the highway. Maybe. Yeah, because it's like we have this we have this alternative timeline thing looming over us. It's like, how the hell is this playing into everything, right? However you feel about some of these narrative changes on your own, how I personally feel about it, especially now with just how many like remakes there are floating about one to one remakes or again, remakes that are basically the same, but slightly different, take some creative liberties. I think this approach with seven, in my opinion, is incredibly fresh and puts everybody, both veterans and newcomers in a place of theorizing and curiosity as to what is going on on top of that also being able to deliver on recreating the original seven with brand new imagery i appreciate the fact that yeah you could argue with they're milking it because it's three games but amongst every other remake this is definitely not phoned in okay milkable yeah phoned in no and it's at an entire layer of new mystery for people so you know what could have been a one-to-one -one remake where you're just going through the motions and it's like hey, it's the original seven again now we have this entirely new fresh very ambitious story going on here that is trying to encapsulate all of the original seven uh lore and universe into a brand new experience it is not trying to to replace the original it is trying to complement the original that's how i see it so you know i wouldn't say this is like a replacement at all so i do recommend everyone plays the original final fantasy 7 in fact i'm working on a for beginners so it might be easier now than ever and i think we can rest easy because 95 percent of remake is very faithful and very true to the original seven they clearly know how to take the original ideas and original scenes and um, enhance them, you know, in, in whatever way they think works and incorporate other aspects of the seven universe that make it make sense. And, you know, 95% of remake is like that. And then that last 5% is all insane fan theory all the time. How do you know everything about the seven universe? Start theorizing, fellas. It purposely leaves you in that state of what the fuck is going on for the sake of curiosity. We can't really say the quality of how this, this new whatever the fuck they're going for this alternate timeline how this is actually going to wrap up or the quality of it until we see it said and done my hair is going nuts right now so i want to give it the benefit of the doubt because everything else about the game is fucking amazing it's like stuff that you thought they were going to cut they enhanced to like a huge degree you know the dress scene best part of remake i'm not going to be like ah this extra timeline shit stupid blah 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 because i don't know where it's going i can't pretend i know where it's going all i know is i'm interested and there's a whole new level of curiosity with this and it's not by the book and it's not a snooze fest it's got energy anyway it's still a turkey also, it plays fucking amazing. Look at this shit. First of all, they have new combo abilities here. Uh, if you played the Yuffie DLC in Integrate, they introduced uh, kind of like duo abilities. Two party members can combo together and do like a special move. So they've already gone about to improve on the general gameplay. I thought the gameplay of Remake was very solid. Obviously could have had some rough edges, especially when it came to like aerial combat, but you could already see general improvements in Integrate's DLC. And I think they're gonna go even above and beyond. And you can see that here a little bit more. Um, Here we go, we got Red 13. Red 13 was technically playable in Remake in the files. People were able to data mine his playable kit. The dev said they didn't want to introduce like a brand new character that late into the end of the that game because they thought it would be like, what's the point, you know? Um, so it makes sense. Um, but here he is. And look at this, look at this combo move. Look at my girlfriends, go fucking ape shit. We got Red 13. <laughs> Look at this! And we got Yuffie. Yuffie with Red 13. Incredible. We got Barrett with Cloud doing a combo move. It seems like everybody gets some kind of combination. Alright, and this is on the boat. Another detail as well, when it comes to like the original seven, Vincent and Yuffie are technically optional party members, you know, cause it's like, it's an older game and having them tag along just adds a few extra dialogue boxes and a few extra scenes, right? 
in this case, they're not going to be optional. They're, everyone considers Yuffie and Vincent core parts of the, the main cast anyway, and I don't, they can't, I can't imagine them putting all this fucking extra work in to have them be optional in this experience. Makes no damn sense, all right? Having Yuffie be way more involved in everything is just better for everybody all around, okay? She's on the boat. She's just like out here trying to steal their fucking materia, and then Genova just shows up, and she's just like... They're canon now. They've always been, baby. They technically, in my is. mind. And then this is Cloud doing his reunion shit, because, like, technically he's a puppet. Yeah. You murdered my dad. This is you the flashback sequence face. that Tifa remembers. Do you know that I killed her? So, who is she? Is she? Is is this like is just a Saf Sephiroth like gaslighting, or did something like legitimately happen to Tifa? God, what is going? Piece of your soul. Is it Tifa? Or is he talking about Aerith? Is this like a psych out? This might be. He might be talking about Aerith in this case. Those you hate. Those you and also the the whole the fact that like Genova can become the one you hate, the one you love. Are we getting Genova clones out here? That she can peer inside you. In is it a misdirect or does he mean air? That might be a misdirect. That she can become those you hate, those you fear, those you love. God, it looks so cool here. Because, like, in this flashback sequence, you know, Tifa does confront Sephiroth and he does, you know, knock her really hard, but she doesn't die. In the original, that is. So in this case, he might be he might be talking about Aerith as well, where it's like, you know, I killed her. Who the fuck is this? And that's the deal. It's because like Aerith also seems like she knows more than what she's leading on. She's got secrets, right? In Japanese, he says Tifa. Does he say like, did, did you know I killed Tifa? Then who is she? If that's the case, that's a little different then. What is going on? I checked, he says Tifa. Okay. God. I feel like I'm bamboozled. What is Sephiroth's plan intensifies, yeah. Inside you. The reason Cloud is so angry in the flashback scene and stabs Sephiroth is because he thinks Sephiroth killed Tifa in the OG. That's true, yeah, because it's like Tifa confronts him, Sephiroth does that, Cloud is like, holy fuck Tifa, grabs the buster sword, you know, from Zack, who's also knocked out, and then charges to Sephiroth, confronts him, does his little, you know, Cloud gets fucking stabbed. He does his cool ass shit where he like pulls himself through it and then beats the shit out of Sephiroth and then throws him down into the reactor, thus sending him into the crater where he ends up staying. I th is he, is this, is this a reveal or is he just fucking around? Like that's the, that's the secret. Sephiroth's a slimy little bitch. He'd just be lying out here. I think we saw like three timelines in the show. Like, maybe there is another timeline. Maybe it's not just two. Maybe, maybe they're going full multiverse where it's like, oh, each character could have died in each timeline, right? And how does... Who fucking know? <laughs> and this is what I'm saying when it comes to, like, fucking with people's expectations here. They, they've they stated that they're not deviating too hard from the main story, at least in the case of, like, the scenes that we see. There's a certain expectation, and the big question looming over this whole thing is, is Aerith's fate sealed? Is she going to die, die? And I, I believe that they're kind of setting up this this sensation or this false idea that she's going to live, ba basically giving the player false hope that this is we're going to be able to deviate from this. And they're going to make her death hit all over again for people. Because if you give folks the idea that they can change it or that she is savable in some way and then she isn't, it's going to hurt again. And that's how you make a character's death that is well known amongst pop culture to hurt hurt again. That's what I think they're trying to do here. It's like purposefully psyching out and messing with expectations so that it reapplies that pain. Because it's like if we went to this remake knowing that the story was one for one, the same as always, knowing that Aerith dies, when it when she dies, you're just like, yep, yeah, well, it feels the same how it did. It just looks sadder now because of how real it is. But if you give the player the idea that maybe that this is going to be different and you don't know if she's going to live or not, when it does happen again, it's going to hurt even more so. So, oh God, because here's the thing. Like, we can theorize all day long. We can be right. We can be totally off the mark here. We won't know until we know. All I know is I'm on fucking board. And what we're seeing here is fantastic, fan-fucking-tastic. 
the world looks immaculate. This this mystery looming over this 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 timeline or this these remake projects is oh man, you can go crazy with it. The brain worms are firing, yeah. Well, one thing I also want to reiterate to people too, for folks who are like not so pleased with like taking these very large creative liberty leaps, right? Please don't blame Namora exclusively, please. I'm begging you. Out of all of the people, and you can read developer interviews on this. Nojima, one of the head writers of a majority of the Final Fantasies, he is the one really in charge for a lot of the more creative ideas in this when it comes to like redefining the timeline and doing all of this, you know, crazy uh, uh, mumbo jumbo, right? Nomura, in, based off of the interviews, was actually the one advocating for them to stick closer to the original story. So I want that, I want, I'm tired of hearing like, oh, it went Kingdom Hearts at the end, okay? All of the, all of the information we have about the development states the exact opposite. So please, if you're gonna get mad at somebody, please blame the right people. In this case, yes, Katase and Nojima are the crazier writers. Nomura, in this case, in, he, he directed Remake. In Rebirth, he has been moved to creative director. He is no longer the head director. He is in the creative position for oversight because he's working on other projects. I just want that out there for people who are just unaware of it Nomura was the one advocating that they stick closer to the original source material please drop the kingdom hearts shit i'm begging y'all rather or not you jive with it or not i'm personally on board with this mystery because like look at look at me fucking going bananas over this if this was just one-to-one -one shit we wouldn't be doing any of this right and Nomura is still involved as a creative director the difference between creative director and director is really just a case of team management being a director means you have to constantly be in oversight of the project and making sure people are doing certain things on time and constantly giving in your input Put that kind of thing. It's more about management. Creative director is strictly ideas and being able to be like, does this pass the vibe check? That's what Namor has been moved to, which is a less stressful position, but his influence will still be felt in this experience, okay? But the writing aspect is mainly being led by Katase and Nojima, because you can love it or hate it, but if you see folks blaming Namora for this stuff, please just give them a little... Did you know? Not the case, okay? Because all the interviews stayed otherwise. And I'm, I'm really getting sick of this shit getting perpetuated. And I want to see how this concludes. I don't want to give my final say if, the, uh, if these changes are good or bad yet until we see it conclude. So but y'all, look at this. Look how gorgeous this is. God, as someone who did not play the original seven, I saw Remake was kind of on the fence about getting into it. Well, I still recommend Remake to everybody, but I highly encourage you, if you haven't played the original seven, to do so. Because one, you will be more armed for certain, uh, I guess, plot reveals, and you can have a better appreciation for Remake, in my opinion. Remake is 95% completely fine for a brand new person, but the ending will make no fucking sense to you. It's a cliffhanger anyway, but you will have no context, no fucking clue why things are happening. And people who do know the original seven are also kind of in that boat. So I highly recommend playing the original seven. It is still very good. And uh, I said this the other night, assuming a really dumbass fucking YouTuber finishes her goddamn four beginners on time, getting into the original seven will be easier than ever. Rebirth will have, they have made preparations for people who did not play remake to enjoy Rebirth. It's most likely going to be like one of those menu videos where like Aerith goes back and recaps the events of Remake for people and like a little clip video. I think that's what you can get. I don't think it'll be a, a, a good enough substitute for just playing the game yourself. If this looks cool to you, please play Remake. It's a really good game. <laughs> I do recommend the original as well. The original Final Fantasy VII is available on everything, every modern console you can think of. The Switch version has built-in cheats. You know, please, please, please check it out. Yeah, also the small reveals and remake make sense if you played the original. Well, yeah, and again, we're veterans and newcomers alike are all in the same boat of what's going on? What? You know? So with that, it's fun to being able to help new people get into this and, and being able to appreciate some of the, like, the changes. But say, if you play the original and play Remake, you'll have a, I, I think you have a much better appreciation for the glow up, if that makes sense. All I want from, I do desperately want to see the dolphin. I want the dolphin. I want the dumbass mini games, which, you know, like, because Remake, in my opinion, was incredibly solid and very incredibly faithful, I, I don't have a lot of fear with this. I'm expecting this to be just as impressive as Remake and more than, and more so. You know, like, there was a lot of hesitation with Remake because it's like, okay, you're changing an awful fucking lot. It's like, we're, we're going into parts. You've, you've changed the gameplay. And then it came out and it really, it exceeded a lot of people's expectations. And a lot of people were like, 
Okay, maybe we can give this whole several projects thing a wing, all right? Because this is pretty goddamn solid. Of course, there were some people had gripes, people had issues, but for the most part, Remake was m really on, like, probably the most, like, well-received Final Fantasy in a long time. I hope we get Cisne. I hope so, too. And honestly, I think there's a decent chance of her showing up. So in the Yuffie DLC, at the very least, like, Weiss and Nero are in the Yuffie DLC. So I can't imagine Cisne not being somewhere at least mentioned or popping up. Maybe we'll see her, like, retired on the beach somewhere. You know, wouldn't that be cute? Would it be, it'd be, I think having her be, like, a little cameo would be kind of nice. Maybe she's, like, working on a farm somewhere or something. Um, cause she retires, you know, she's like out of here. She's like, yeah, fuck Shinra, I'm done with this shit. So maybe she's off just kind of like, you know, frolicking in a field somewhere and we can just like come across her. Like they mention, at least in Remake, they mention like console, uh, the, uh, your, your soldier buddy from Crisis Core, like, you know, your BFF. They, I think like any opportunity that they have to insert characters that were pre-established in ways that are cute and faithful are definitely likely. They have taken in consideration all of the compilation, not just the original. Do you think Genesis will show up or mention in Rebirth? Maybe. Yeah, I think because everybody else is making some kind of reappearance, I think Genesis is also going to make a reappearance in some way. See, this thing was with like these extra characters kind of lingering um, is I don't know how much of an influence they'll play on like this new scenario timeline thing that we got going on. Do I think Genesis and Angel have a chance of showing back up again? Absolutely. fucking lootly There's a reason why they re-released Crisis Core. There's also a reason why they didn't change anything in Crisis Core and it was like, mind you, this game or these projects are not here to replace anything or retroactively change anything. It is an addition in some capacity. Not sure how or why, but it is not interested in changing the past. It is interested in establishing something on top of everything else. So keep that in mind. Anybody who has appeared before has a chance of coming back in some capacity. It annoys me that people cried for Remake for years and then those same people cried when they remade the game. Well, you know, because a lot of people when they were begging for a 7 remake, they wanted it to just be a one-to-one -one remake. The original 7, turn base and all, just glammed up. They wanted it to look like this, but not be this. You know what I'm saying? You know, that was like a decade ago. People have been clamoring on. Re really since like Advent Children or ever since 7 came back, you know, after the original, people had been asking for a remake because they saw what modern Final Fantasy VII looked like and they're like, wow, this is really fucking sexy. I sure wish the original looked this nice. Of course, it took them a really long time to kind of build up to it. You know, they announced it and they're like, all right, we're doing, it's in parts and we're changing a lot. But everyone's like, well, that's not at all what we asked for. <laughs> and I was also kind of very weary of it at the time too. And uh, like based off the information they had given us, we didn't have a lot of substantial shit to work with. As Remake had progressed and they showed more of it and then finally having a chance to play it, I have full confidence in this team of pulling off something absolutely bananas and cool. The way I see it now is just like, the fact that remakes are so, fuck they're so abundant. Like every game gets a remake at some point, but Seven is, Seven's remake process is the most unique out of all all of them and for the sake of like avoiding redundancy i think it's fucking sick maybe it's just because like the older i get the more i appreciate brand new things and this feels so new and i really like that you know i think like when i was younger like a teenager i had a more like uh, it's stupid because it's different but now the older i get the more i'm like it's great because it's different and i appreciate different things god damn i mean it's who fucking knows where this is going? Isn't that fun? <laughs> well, all we know, um, at least at this point, so let, let me wrap this shit up. Early 2024 on two discs. No, probably no different than how Remake was with two discs. Probably a data disc and a play disc, right? I estimate March or April 2024, because that's roughly the end of that quarter. We also know that, you know, again, there is one more game after this. The real questions so far, are they going to disclose when, where this game is going to end? Or are they going to leave that a mystery until it releases? My speculation here is that it's going to end with with Cloud giving the black materia to Sephiroth and all that shit goes down and, you know, Meteor gets summoned. It's going to end with Meteor gets summoned. And then part three is going to start as Tifa, as when you wake up in Junon and you look outside and it's like, oh shit, the world's ending. You know, it's like, hey, what's up with that? Um, I think starting part three as playing as Tifa would be 
pretty optimal considering that feels like good gap of time to begin and a new, a new journey, right? And then also we can expect several trailers between now and release, uh, probably introducing Sid, Kate Sith, and Vincent and uh, highlighting some other aspects of the game. They were definitely withholding themselves in this trailer, but wanting to show off at least the open world aspect, which is really cool. I can't wait to kiss Barrett at the Golden Saucer. Me too. Yeah, the Golden Saucer could get its own trailer. There's so much that they didn't show in here that we know is in this part of the game, right? You know, we got a little bit of Cosmo Canyon. We got a little bit of Junon, but there's still a ton of stuff we didn't see. No, nothing in Rocket Town, no Gongaga. We also still don't know how open this game is. They haven't specifically stated it is a full open world. I believe they've alluded to open areas connected in various ways and being able to kind of go between any like areas you want. Honestly, I don't think it makes much of a difference between full open world and open zones. If all the content is there, it's there. That's great. I can't wait to see more of this. I'm super fucking stoked. And the mystery continues. We don't know. We won't know until we see it, right?